as crazy as it seems to say, hockey is a lifestyle. It brought out the confidence in me to become the person I am today. I think hockey is this one thing in Canada that gets people together wherever they're from. And to see somebody just starting day one, it was really, really cool to see that. No matter how you say it, no matter how you play it, it's hockey. And I hope that anybody, no matter their background, is able to have the same experience as I did through hockey because it really did save my life. It's literally all because of hockey. Did you push record? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome to Chestermere Lake, home of the Lakers and the world's longest hockey game and the Western Canada Pond Hockey Championships and Chestermere Swine. We're gonna go skate now. We'll show you the rest tomorrow. Well, today, because it's midnight now. November 17th, Hockey 24. Good morning, Canada. It is Sunday morning. Mom is working the night shifts and I have to get my two kids to the hockey rink. So this could get interesting. Wish me luck. Sunday, November 17th, 2019. Yo. Good morning. It's hockey time. Hockey. Hockey. It's time for hockey. It's time for hockey. Let's go. Hockey. Gotta get ready. It's time for hockey, girl. Are you excited? Time to get up, Mom. Gotta go to hockey. Good morning, sunshine. You ready for hockey? Ish. I think it's all going. That's still night time, right? I know. To wake up super early to go to hockey. It is uh, 5.30 in the morning, we're in a hockey tournament. It's early, we both just woke up five minutes ago, but off to hockey this morning. Here comes the hockey bag. Multiple kids, multiple rinks. So my wife and I will have to divide and conquer never wakes up with a complaint, always wakes up with a smile. And that's why we do it. My name is Darcy Tucker. Played 16 years uh, professional hockey, 15 in the National Hockey League. And I'm uh, now coaching the Toronto Titans uh, Bantam AAA team. There's a lot of balls in the air when it comes to being a dad and a coach but it's also one of the most rewarding things you can do as a father. My dad being my coach strengthens the bond. We're always with each other all the time. I've learned that skill can take you a long way down the road, but hard work takes you all the way. This is gonna sound crazy. The fondest memories I have of my dad as my coach is the, the car rides to the rink and back. He taught me how to skate on the outdoor rink, and he coached my team uh, from the time I was able to play hockey to the time I left home at uh, 14 or 15 years old. For me, knowing and understanding what that mentorship and guidance from my father uh, did for myself, not only as a hockey player, but as a person, I kind of uh, wanted to, to have that with my boys. Coach Darcy's uh, hard on the bench, even though I know he's, he's probably right. But when we get home, he just forgets about it. Doesn't matter what happened in the game. As soon as we get in that car, Coach Darcy switched to Dad Darcy. After the game, it's all, it's all love, yeah. Man, when it's right and things go according to what you see as a plan as a coach and a dad, um, there's nothing more rewarding, that's for sure. Do you ever have to wake up your parents? No. <laughs> They're early risers. 
mine are not. two cars in the parking lot. I wouldn't want to be in another place. Like, this is where I come to work every day. When it's quiet in here and there's nobody, nobody in the facility, it's like, it's just peaceful. It's the longest continuous operating arena in the world. There are some older arenas in the world, but they've had seasons where they, they haven't had ice, and we haven't lost a season yet. My Uncle Bruce was arena supervisor, then had the opportunity, and you know I took over, and now it doesn't seem like I ever leave an arena. If I'm not here working, and not here watching, or not here coaching, I'm at home watching. It's something you love to do, then it's not a job. We have a birthday girl in the house. She's our goalie. 11 years old today. Yeah, I know. All right, she's up and moving. We're on the go. Are you excited, Ishan, for your yeah. hockey? Yeah, smiling, always happy to go. This is a hockey morning. Special games deserve a special breakfast. Spinach, banana, apple, pineapple, chia seeds, and flax seeds. What happens if you have junk breakfast before hockey? Make your favorite dumb fuck. My name is Quinn, and I love to play hockey, and I have six of fibrosis. Quinn's a very fun-loving kid. Hockey, he will tell you he would do hockey 24-7. Somewhere in this area of what one day would be right now. And on top of that, he's got this, which is a multivitamin. His, when he does his venting, this is a vial of saline. And then 0.7 mils, uh, milliliters of ventolin or salbutamol. And, that runs for roughly about 27 minutes. And then followed by uh, his, what's called his PEP system. Each set of 15s followed by he uh, heavy breaths out, with the third one being followed with three heavy coughs. Again, that's to try and knock off any additional mucus that might have built up in, in his lungs. I like hockey because I, I have fun with my friends. You would never know Quinn has cystic fibrosis. He lives a daily life like every other kid. As a coach, it makes you feel so good. The things that he can accomplish on the ice and off the ice. And it just, when you see him, it makes you proud that you're part of his life. Three, one, two, three, seven. Cystic fibrosis is a condition that affects both the lungs and the pancreas. The average life expectancy in, in Canada is actually 51. He, he understands that he's got a disease and he just goes about 
trying to live his days normally. And fortunately, we haven't had any scares. Every once in a while, he does, I think, mentally, it can, it can take the toll on him. Um, he, he'll, he'll lash out a little bit about how, how he hates cystic vendors. So. Quinn, the hockey player, is built on determination. And I would say a lot of courage, right? He's not scared to, to go in the corners. He's not scared to go after the puck. So, and he's just, he's a little guy that's just determined, no matter what, to win those little battles. Final this morning, and uh, our goalie here is having the breakfast of champions, and she's eating her Hawaiian pizza cold, straight out of the fridge. It'll be a long day of hockey. You're still the flying, yes. Making some lunches. Do you need some help, buddy? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Are you gonna cheer for your brother's team today, Holden? Let me see. How are you gonna cheer? You walk into our house, you smell hockey. Born with a disability, there's no manual on how to get dressed or transfer from your chair to other places. It's all, all kind of, you have to learn on your own. My brother played hockey since he was like four years old, but I didn't have hockey for myself until much later on. It was incredible and I knew this was something that I wanted to continue playing basically as long as my body will allow me to do it. She's never had the opportunity to be able to be competitive, play a sport, be on a team. So her having sledge hockey is everything really because we saw what it did for her, bringing her out of her shell and, you know, and it was a no brainer for us to just jump right on top of it and become the sledge hockey parents. A hockey game is a hockey game. Uh, practice is a practice. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're stand up or in a sled. You, if you're competitive, you want to win. Kids have grown up playing on my rink. The first time they went skating was, was at the pig pen, and uh, we named that after my pet pot belly pig there, Penny. I got her shortly after I moved in. She was a rescue, five months old, and uh, now she'll be going on 10 years. And we named uh, the pond hockey team the Chestermere Swine. We uh, put out a tree every year and put lights on it and it helps uh, keep the sleds off the rink. Uh, that when they're coming at night, you don't want them to hit the banks and hurt themselves and it ruins ice as well. There you go. Perfect tree. Ready for the big game today? Yeah! I'm so excited! 
Did it help? J'ai beaucoup fierté de parler de mon, mes origines. J'ai été conçu en Haïti et je suis né ici à Montréal. Mes parents sont venus ici avec un rêve de dire je vais venir grandir, sortir d'Haïti dans la misère, parce que c'était difficile pour eux. Donc c'était déjà un choix déchirant en début, mais c'est un sacrifice qu'ils savaient qu'éventuellement ce serait bon pour les enfants et vivre une famille ici à Montréal. Puis je veux pas que ça touche le bâton. OK. okay. Si tu touches le bâton, tu me donnes cinq push up Quoi? C'est la confiance. OK? Prêt? Donc là... Si tu le mets pas au filet, c'est 10 pour shop. Non. OK, 5. Yes. Bonne négociation. Mes parents étaient très... Euh, euh, croyaient fortement au jeu d'équipe. Croyaient fortement au fait que si je ne m'attarde pas à penser à rien faire puis aller euh, re rencontrer des jeunes pour faire des mauvais actes, comme on dit, puis de participer dans les sports, ça me garderait sur une voie très positive. Puis ça, je les en remercie vraiment énormément parce que c'est la personne que je suis aujourd'hui, c'est grâce à mes parents. Quand j'arrivais à l'aréna, les gens me regardaient avec un, un noir qui jouait au hockey. T'sais, vraiment, avec des... mon premier réflexe, c'était de baisser la tête. Puis j'essayais de rentrer vite, vite dans la chambre pour pas qu'on me voit. Un élément de mon équipement qui me permettait de... De, de faire un genre de, de barrage versus toutes les injures que je recevais, c'était mon casque. Ouais. Quand je mettais mon casque sur la tête, c'était comme Batman, c'était comme Spider-Man. Puis là, je me disais, je deviens un super-héros. Puis je vais remontrer à tous ces gens-là que je suis capable d'être comme eux, sinon mieux. Le, le, le projet de Team Haïti, ça nous ouvrait une porte d'opportunité pour nous de redorer le blason du peuple haïtien. Puis effectivement, qu'on parle de, du cyclone, qu'on parle de la malaria, qu'on parle du tremblement de terre d'Haïti en 2010. Quand on parle d'Haïti, on parle toujours de négatif, négatif, négatif. Puis pour nous, tous les gens qui se sont associés au projet, est, on était tannés, on dit, on a une chance, guys, de faire une différence. On a une chance que quand on ouvre le journal, puis qu'on ouvre les nouvelles, on pourra parler en bien d'Haïti. Quand on a gagné, c'était une chose. C'était vraiment intense. On a gagné le, le championnat mondial, puis c'était Team Haïti. Puis ça rayonnait partout, dans les journaux, dans les, dans les nouvelles, la télévision et tout le tralala. Mais encore une fois, je vais revenir à un peu, peu d'émotion, c'est quand on est revenu à Montréal, puis qu'on était à l'aéroport. Mais c'était tout. Nos parents, nos frères, nos soeurs, nos enfants, euh, les amis proches qui étaient là, puis là, tu le voyais les, les larmes, tout le monde était en larmes. Puis là, on nous disait, mais on a juste joué au hockey. Là. Non, non, vous comprenez pas, guys, ce que vous avez fait pour nous. On a vécu un, un deux semaines et demie de rêve. On vous suivait, c'était une fierté. On n'entendait plus parler de malaria, on n'entendait plus parler de, du choléra, on n'entendait plus parler du, de, du tremblement de terre. On entendait juste des jeunes haïtiens qui sont allés faire la différence en jouant au hockey dans un sport qui, normalement, les a, ne leur appartient pas. Quand j'ai vu mon père à l'aéroport, là, il a même pas dit un mot, là, t'sais. Il a pris la médaille, puis... On cherche tout le temps l'approbation de nos parents, t'sais, pour des gestes qu'on fait quand on est jeune, t'sais. Des... Puis mon père était très dur avec moi, t'sais. Mais ce moment-là, T'sais, de voir mon père fier de moi. T'sais, je vois, je, ma mère me le disait tout le temps, fier de moi et même. C'est naturel, mais quand tu entends ton père puis qu'il te regarde puis qu avec des yeux brillants, puis il est à l'aéroport, puis il voit tout le monde qui scande ton nom, puis qui dit Waouh, je suis fier de toi, là, ça n'a pas de prix. T'sais. À l'assaut! À l'assaut! À l'assaut! Mon identité vient vraiment du hockey. C'est particulier à dire. J'ai depuis trois ans, quatre ans que je joue au hockey, puis j'ai jamais arrêté jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Mais mes parents, je leur lève le chapeau. C'est grâce à eux que je suis la personne que je suis aujourd'hui. This is the first year that the boys are carrying their own bags. 
a rite of passage. Become good, like it, it, there's a variety of factors. You have to have that heart and that ethic and blessed with a great talent. But Darian, I mean, he's got all of them. Wehuhuera, Cookbee, Willie Sellers, Run Squest, the Keckle Squep Mulu. Hello, my name is Chief Willie Sellers with the Williams Lake Indian Band. Williams Lake, first and foremost, is a hockey town. You know, you come here and you are able to see right away that you don't have to be First Nation, you don't have to be non-First Nation. Uh, everybody is pretty passionate about getting to the rink. This is doable, okay? I'm not gonna make it easy, this is doable. We gotta move our feet, okay? Stops and starts, move our feet. You know, I didn't really know no Darian until you know, I seen him on that ice and, and we were related on that hockey level. It's like, wow, this kid is the best goalie in the league. And he's just like kind of picking it up off to the side and playing player sometimes and goalie sometimes. And uh, Anne recognized it. And we're talking to Anne too about it, saying like, this kid is blessed. You know, just like Darian on the ice being such a role model he is for those First Nations youth, I mean, Anne is a, is a you know, a role model in her own right. She was a chief for 10 years in our community. She was taking, you know, guardianship of her grandson, Darian, and beating cancer multiple times. I mean, you, you, you take a look at what she was able to accomplish um, facing all of that adversity. Can't imagine how much stronger of a person she is now because of it, but how much more of a positive role model she is in each of these communities because of what she is able to accomplish over the years. It's not cheap to play hockey, especially that higher level hockey, but and scrimped and saved and, 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 and found a good deal and got him, you know, gear that matched our jerseys. And he went out there and he was a star. All tied up, boys, down to 20 minutes. It's what team wants it more. Okay, pucks out, more shots on net. Whoever shows up this period is going to have the win, boys. There we go, boys! Go, boys, five minute warm up. Go, boys, go, boys.
it's a great feeling when you know you have your biggest fans in the audience. My grandma's number six on the Tigers. I love my granddad plays hockey. Sometimes I give my grandma hockey tips. My grandma rocks. I used to figure skate, and a girlfriend of mine just said, why don't you try playing hockey? And it was amazing. And I thought, I can do this. I've been with the same ladies for 22 years. The whole league plays like a team, and we just have a lot of fun, a lot of smiles. We had nowhere to play, and we used to travel to Toronto to play rec hockey. And we started here in Hamilton with four teams. Now we're the largest in North America. In the Hamilton Women's Hockey League, we have 590 ladies, and 257 are over 50 years old. We have five or six grandmothers playing in our game, plus our referees are grandmothers too. I hope that my grandkids one day can take away from the, that yes, you can play hockey all your life, or as long as you possibly can. Go Grandma! Samuel, es-tu prêt pour ta game de hockey? Ouais. The car is packed. We've got my younger son, Sam, in the back. We've got a bunch of hockey sticks. Not all the bags fit in the trunk, so we got one in the back seat. And now we are ready to go, right, bud? Hello out there, we're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players jump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Second period. Where players dash with skates a flash, the whole team trails behind. But they grab the puck and go first thing up, and they're down across the line. They storm the crease like bumblebees, they travel like a burning flame. We see them slide the puck inside, it's a one run hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game. It's the best game you can name. And the best game you can name. It's a game of hockey game. Was it your first goal ever? High five, girl. All right. I got second place in my three on three team, second place for the Markham Silver Stars team, and we won the champion for the Apple Fest tournament in Clarington. I got this one in Spain. It's my most valuable one. So, this is actually uh, my first one from uh, Nagano, so silver medal 1998. And this one, actually, 2002, our first gold medal in Salt Lake City. And then we won our second Olympic gold medal in Torino in 2006. And then we have Vancouver, of course, 2010 in Canada. Uh, and my final gold medal and um, last game I played with the national team was in Sochi in 2014. The gold medal is just, you know, the the result, but all those journeys um, were pretty awesome and, and the things you learn and the, the challenges and, you know, the difficult times, but um, when you have a bunch of teammates you get to go through those experiences with, it's pretty cool.
kids are, are smart and you know Isla's six now and um, she's already mentioned why do girls not play football um, and we don't watch football very often but she's smart enough to, to know she doesn't see that so she's also going to be smart enough really soon if she hasn't already realized that the only place she sees women play hockey at the, the top level is the Olympic Games and you know when she wants to be a hockey player at 10 years old I hope she believes that she could have a future in it um, if Lachlan chooses to play hockey and, and at 10 years old he's going to know that there's a potential future in it so if you can't see it as being a realistic path then girls are going to drop out of sport at a young age and we're not going to learn all the great values we learned through the game. Anybody that watches Marie-Philippe Poulin or Natalie Spooner or Hilary Knight and all of the players around them too, everybody's gotten to such a great level. The product is amazing, but the infrastructure around it has not caught up. But now there are successes to point to. Jana and I went to the Portland women's uh, professional soccer team and it was full. It was boisterous. There were these grown men banging on the drums like they do at the men's games. And it was like, holy smokes, this is what it actually looks like. There's other professional women's sports to point to and saying, uh, we're not exactly sure what it looks like in women's hockey, but it kind of looks like that eventually. As I you know, got to, to play and meet other people and you know, someone like Cassie Campbell has been, you know, such a role model for me in terms of, you know, the best captain I played for and, and seeing the, her leadership style and skills and how she can unite people and bring them together and, and get the best out of people. That's important. Come on in, girls. Well, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Cassie Campbell Pascal. And I used to play on the women's national team before you guys were born, like a very long time ago. And we've been doing this program for 15 years. It's pretty neat, hey? We have 270 girls coming to the Scotiabank Girls Hockey Fest in Calgary. And, you know, I, I think first off, you're, you're coming out onto the ice and you're going to be on the same ice surface as the Calgary Flames. And then you're probably thinking, you know, one day we're going to have a professional women's hockey league and potentially play on the same ice surface. And so, um, you know, I think there's a lot of emotions, a lot of excitement. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a real fun few hours for them. Okay, in three, two, one. Events like these play a significant role in the growth of women's hockey. I think it's any time we can pay that much attention to the growth of that specific sport. It really just gives the girls a glimpse of what an all-girls environment is and where they can take that moving forward. I play for Canada. I think it's very important that she plays hockey. It's part of our culture, right? And she enjoys it quite a bit. Like, even now, she's a way better hockey player than I ever was. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me. So I grew up playing women's hockey. Uh, I am transgender, so I'm a transgender man. And I am the first transgender athlete in professional hockey. For me, hockey uh, was a really big safe space for me. I was able to be myself. I was surrounded by teammates that I made really great friendships with, really great memories. And I hope that anybody, no matter their background, uh, is able to have the same experiences I did through hockey because it really did save my life. Um, and now I work with an organization called You Can Play, and we are partnered with Scotiabank as well. Yeah. So we ensure that LGBTQ athletes, fans, uh, coaches, anybody that's involved with the sport has a space to play because hockey truly is for everyone. Sports is really for everyone as well. Uh, in the last five years, we've been running uh, the Calgary Inclusive Hockey Association, which uh, is a unique organization that focuses on LGBTQ equality in hockey. And um, we've created an organization here that really drives community engagement and sort of that awareness and education piece for the LGBTQ community. So I came out a bit later in life, 32. I was playing hockey at the time in a, in a rec league and uh, with a lot of the um, guys I went to high school with and sort of knew. 
When I came out, um, it was came across easy at first, but then I started to notice some um, some changes in people's attitudes and people not wanting to shower when I was showering, and it sort of got um, quite awkward real quickly. And I, I started to realize that maybe they're they're not okay with it. Halfway through that season, I was asked not to play with them anymore um, because of my sexual orientation. That was a big blow, obviously. Um, it was pretty, uh, pretty frustrating and uh, uh, pretty sad that that happened. That was in 2015. Uh, that that still happens and that people aren't comfortable um, with others and their sexual orientation, especially if it's with people that you knew or grew up with. So we're going to go see uh, my nephews. We usually hang out with them about once a week. Um, they're, uh, they're pretty awesome. They both play, uh, play hockey, and uh, we're really, really close with them, and uh, they're a huge support of us as well. Uh, hey, I brought something for you, man. Yay. So you can bring it to your team. <laughs> you guys want to do sticks in the middle? All right. All right. Who's the youngest? Still in the play? I'm going to throw them out. Something I've learned is you can try and do things on your own. But if you surround yourself with good people, uh, people that are supportive, just like you would on a hockey line, uh, you're going to be more successful at it. but she makes do with what she can. In Vancouver, what kind of weather do we normally get? Rain! So today we decided to play inside. Woo Come on! Pass the puck. Little defense there, side go. Yeah, so first uh, we met Brian at a language school and then uh, we joined his World Hockey League and then we met there at the game, at our first game. This last uh, September we got married here and then we were together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rock Hockey League for me was to get closer um, with the Canadian culture, to play with all these people all around the world. We are a team. So we are very happy, and I'm really happy too. <laughs> Epic stop by the Japanese goaltender. <laughs> Shoots! Scores! Game over! Team Bear with the winner! There you are, holding it above your head. Congratulations! <laughs> So let me tell you a little bit about the uh, the little Stanley Cup that that we won, and I you know hope I have my facts right here. But uh, it was in 1954-55 when League President uh, Clarence Campbell was approached and um, actually allowed East York to create uh, the only official replica of the large Stanley Cup for their hockey association. Um, and so since 54-55, it's been awarded to the the winners of the Pee Wee Division. To be able to get this group of kids back together again and uh, just, you know, once again celebrate what was, you know, a, just a, an unbelievable season that we had together is, is, is priceless. And I've heard it from a few, from a few parents already that the, the kids are just, you know, beaming about the opportunity to, you know, go to the Hall of Fame and go down to Scotiabank Arena and, and just be part of a, such a special day. So guys, we're about to go on the ice here one last time. Look around the room again, one more time here. Look around the room at each other. Think about the friendships that you made and the things that you did together and the things that you were able to accomplish. Oh, should we go meet some, uh, should we go meet some players? Yeah! All right. How you doing, Lane? 
team is now on the benches so that they can take a picture at center ice. What they don't know is they're actually going to be competing in the Scotiabank shootout. You guys are going to be going head to head against Andrew Raycroft. We are the Rose family, and we want to tell you about why hockey is important to us. We have our son, Owen, who is three and a half, and he looks at hockey very differently. He has a life-threatening illness, um, and he is hooked up to a pump for 16 hours a day. And he has a coach, um, actually a few coaches, who have taken him on and are not terrified of what's underneath his shirt. What's under your shirt? A nine. You got two B's and, and central lines in his heart, and he is able to actually go out and be part of a team. And what's all of this from? My book. Is that everything that we need to do for you every morning? Yeah. Yeah? It's a mess on the table. It's a mess on the table. All right, buddy, should we go see your team? Yeah. These kids are learning how to play safely. They're learning what team camaraderie means. They're learning um, so many different life lessons. And it's because of the coaches. These coaches have taken on our son and his medical status, and they've incorporated him to be part of this team. And the definition of um, of being team players is what these little guys are doing. Brain crusher! Oh, Will I make it? Yeah, keep climbing. You might wonder what climbing trees has to do with hockey, but in my opinion, it has everything to do with it because if you want to be a decent hockey player, you got to just be an overall good athlete. So, especially the young kids, just don't have them on the ice 24 7. They need to be able to run and play and climb and laugh and just be kids. Ah. Mason, how you doing? Ah. <laughs> ah. Whoa, nice save. Ready to head to the rink? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Every Sunday, we basically uh, try to take them public skating. This is a great place for kids to just come and be free, have fun, no pressure, and uh, build a little bit of confidence. Whoa. Nice one, Grace. That's brave. Now we're gonna put all of your weight on here. Good job. Good. Look at you go. Hockey is about so much more than skills. For me, hockey is, I guess, about becoming a better person and learning the lessons that are gonna help you through life. But everybody can take something away from hockey about respect and leadership and that sort of thing. So that's why I don't want to make it a negative experience by really like forcing it on the kids. And uh, you know, let them experience all kinds of other things. Don't let hockey kind of get in the way of their other experiences. Ready for that slushy? Right now. Yeah. Let's do it right now, let's go. Thank you. Okay, wave.
they're able to come into a place that's, that's friendly, uh, well-maintained, the ice is great. It, it sets them up to be able to just get better and better, and hopefully they'll be able to hit that NHL level one day as well. Since he was a little boy, you could always tell he was so hungry for the puck. Yeah, his compete level was at a different um, different level, I guess, for kids that age. I always tell him, you're, we're a blue collar family, so at the end of the day is everything you're gonna get in life, you're gonna work, work for. And if you can't, then you gotta work harder to earn it. This year, every Sunday, come in here, stretch before our games. We're gonna produce similar situations to what he's gonna produce in a game. Therefore, when he goes into the game tonight, he's already familiar with those sort of situations and he's ready to like perform at the high level. It's tough to make it all work. Um, I work a full-time job, Ricky works a full-time job. Your hope is that it continues because you wanna see him doing better than you. The thing with Ty is, is his passion for the game, number one. Um, he loves the game of hockey. He'd play it all day long if, if we let him. But I, I didn't know the type of leader he was. He's been very vocal with our guys and um, very positive and, and somebody who the kids look to as, as a role model and a leader from day to day. Olivia's a great person. She is a well-rounded, mature young lady, a real role model for other kids. She's a natural leader. I started playing when I was four years old, but I played boys for three years and then I switched into the Burlington Barracudas organization and it's been awesome ever since. Going to Yale wasn't always a dream of mine necessarily. It was a dream of mine just to continue playing hockey and to get a good education. Yale was one of the first to approach me and once I saw the school, met the coaches and everything, I immediately knew that I wanted to go there. Our team is involved uh, uh, throughout the community and uh, now we're working through a, a mentorship program in our organization to uh, work with our younger athletes. Bullying's a very serious problem. It happens. We've seen like the Burlington organization grow and change and we just wanted to help work with the younger kids who are, you can see they're going to become great leaders one day. We're trying to create a sisterhood from uh, our little tyke players all the way up to our junior players. Hopefully giving our younger girls the skills and attitudes and the resilience to be strong and confident and happy in hockey. And, um, you know, if everybody feels included and safe and, and important, then they're going to do great things. You sell tickets, are you? Ultimately, that's the most important thing about hockey, is being involved in the community and making those connections that last a lifetime. As a resident, as a community, uh, you know, volunteer, uh, we're there to support one another. Toronto Police Services, you know, they're, they're coming out and they're giving their time to pro-action cops and kids. I've known Adil since 2013. He's an excellent leader. He's absolutely integral to this program. To provide some sort of an outlet for kids to play sports and uh, grow and learn valuable lessons all the while being active and engaging with police officers and community leaders, I think it's tremendously important. I've been involved with ProAction for about six, seven years now. After I graduated the program, that's when I talked to Adil. He got me exposed and involved to give back to the community. Hard work always pays off. Knowing that you're helping some kid enjoy their day, it's always rewarding.
coach sends us drills before our practice so that it doesn't waste time during practice. For a small province, we certainly produced our fair share of hockey players. I've been coaching for about 15 years of all-female hockey. I've coached all of my daughters. Right now, I'm coaching the Central Storm Midget AAA girls. I'm the assistant coach, and since I'm just kind of beginning my coaching career in the last couple of years, I've been learning a lot. I coach with my father, and I have the last two years. Um, we've had our times where there's been a little bit of drama here and there, as you can imagine, having four family members all part of the same team, but just makes it that much more interesting. We have yet to win against Western Wind this year. We have a tie against them, but um, I think hoping that we pull out our first dub against these guys would be a big celebration. Okay, y'all ready, girls? Let's go here. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> It's important that we're getting a lot more females involved in the game. So as a, a female that played the game myself, I think it would be nice for me to kind of give back and go on to coach someday. Who's out front? It, it was jump on it right away. Uh, it didn't work. Big hole here, girls. All you can do is chip back into us. Uh, obviously, me ranting and roaring is not going to help. That's gone for the year because obviously that was your worst period this year. And it is frustrating. I know we're getting pushed off pucks or we're getting run over, but that's hockey. You play through that stuff. That team's not going to change next time they play you. They're going to play that game every single time. Why? Because it works. Okay, so let's at least push back this third period. You know, let's go out and play like it's nothing, nothing. Win the period and get ready for the early bird. Come on. You know, I preach this as a coach. It's just not hockey. Uh, some of these, uh, the skills that you get is learning to play in that team environment and the discipline and uh, the work ethic and the commitment, all things in everyday life that you need to, to have to be successful. You can't just work hard some shifts and not others. You've got to come to play the whole game. You have to be ready when you come to the rink and ready this afternoon to play every single game. It's not fair to the rest of your teammates that show up to play and you're not working hard and you're not competing because you let them down. And we leave our goalie hung out to dry, especially in the second period, and that's not okay. And everybody owes Julie an apology. All right? Let's get ready for this weekend and ready to practice on Tuesday. I'm prepared for the week. Well, uh, the biggest life lesson, uh, as uh, Cassie said there, it's uh, working hard is not a some of the time thing. It's an all the time thing if you want to be successful. And that's not just not hockey, that's life, right? So, yeah, sure, we're down in the dumps a little bit and we're, you know, the coaches are probably a little bit angry, but we'll move past this and we'll all be smiling and laughing Tuesday and, and getting ready for our next game. And that, that's what makes hockey great. Bon match les gars, ça a fini combien? 6-2. Cool. It's, uh, it's a sense of freedom for me. I don't think about the challenges that I face trying to navigate through some of the situations I encounter during the day. I can just focus on hockey. 
in order to get sledge hockey really up and going, I had to talk to a room full of people from Hockey Nova Scotia and various uh, associations to convince them that sledge hockey was something we needed here in Nova Scotia and that allowed me to be more confident in just who I am and fight for what I believe in. My inspiration is my family. They've taught me that no challenge is insurmountable. Everything can be accomplished. Hockey is very much a way of life. Like for, I think, a lot of maritime families, a lot of Canadian families. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. What do you like best about hockey? I like hanging with my friends and playing games. Yes, that's great. And how about you, Logan? This is what our Sundays go like when we're playing hockey intermission. Father versus son. I'm originally from Turkey. I'm Canadian. Uh, by chance, I, I come across a lady whose son is playing hockey. She say how it is good for the kids socializing, be, becoming part of the team. So I said, mm, but I understand how much it can cost to us. Later, I don't know how it happened. My husband found there's a chance of subsidy. It just connects you with the community, so I find the kids in the Reach Out program are making those connections and just having fun. And now they're all playing, they're on the ice. Maybe, hopefully, he will be the youngest player. Where I come from, there is a hierarchy level, but here I understand the things are different. We don't feel the differences, even among the parents. We don't feel the difference. I think hockey is this one thing in Canada that gets people together wherever they're from. I've seen Syrian families uh, immigrating to Canada. Their kids are in hockey. And at the end of the season, they're friends with anyone on the team. There is no difference. They get together, and they really get a sense of playing as a team. And you can tell that it spreads to the parents as well. Sometimes I find myself yelling in, in my native language. Brahma was me! Devam it! I say, don't give up! Go for it! <laughs> Something like this, yeah. So I'm now becoming more and more involved in hockey. <laughs> I didn't join my first hockey league till I was 15 years old. Started to start playing because I watched my sister play my whole life and I, I wanted to do what she was able to do as well. Joseph has a condition called aniridia, which literally means a lack of irises, which is the colored part of your eyes. Uh, it also affects the development of the optic nerve, which obviously results in issues uh, with vision. When I first started working with him, I didn't even know he had a visual impairment. It wasn't even until the third or fourth lesson his dad brought it up, and then, you know, it didn't even change how we approached the game. It just goes to show, once you're on the ice, hockey's hockey, and anybody can play it. Hockey's a hard sport to learn later on. Um, I think it's, it has the lowest enrollment rate of kids over 15. And so for him to not only enroll in hockey, but also learn it at the same time, it was, I'm very impressed. So his vision is roughly about 2200, which in hockey terms, translates to a puck that you or I could see from one end of the rink to the other. Joe would need to be probably around the hash marks in the same end of the rink to be able to pick up that same puck. Instead of following the puck, he follows the play. So he follows the players, 
And then when the puck gets close enough that he can see it, he reacts to it. So he's just adapted. His teammates have been just incredibly encouraging, as has been his coaches. And I remember the time I told everyone when Joe wasn't there one week that we have a legally blind player on this team. And when I said it was Joe, everyone's saying, no way, disbelief. And then there were smiles on their faces where they, I think, realized, wow, we're playing with a really special person. Someone who looks at challenges and doesn't let it defeat them in advance. Such a role model to me that I know that it's never too late to start something that you want to do. He inspires me to try new things that I probably wouldn't have done without that inspiration. Any, anything that involves taking a leap, I probably wouldn't have done if it wasn't for him inspiring me that that is possible. I'm pretty proud of myself. I didn't think I'd be able to come this far and now I'm out here playing with everybody else, just like everybody else. We are very far north. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. We saw a lot more polar bears than I thought. Kind of crazy that they actually come into Churchill sometimes, but they're used to it here. You know, they, they live with them and I mean, it's their natural habitat. It's cool, I mean, I never thought I would ever be seeing a polar bear in real life, so it's really neat. Hockey to the community of Churchill is a gathering. Hockey didn't happen uh, in a previous year because we didn't have enough coaches. Project North had a great idea to do a coaching clinic. But one of the pieces of the puzzle was that our ice plant was down, and so we didn't have a hockey rink. Earlier this year, when they were doing the routine setup maintenance for the rink, our actual indoor rink, a pretty critical piece called the chiller actually broke. Without a hockey rink, we were trying to decide what we were going to do for the kids. We decided that we were going to get some local volunteers together, and put a hockey rink together outside. Everybody likes to step up at Churchill and uh, lend a helping hand, so once I put it out to the guys, it was pretty quick to get some help. My role originally was just to put water onto the ice and make ice, which turned into setting up the boards, which meant to bring in the pallets over. Pretty much from step one, we've been here. When you kind of live in a small community, you don't always don't have a lot of options, and hockey is a big thing in this town. We love hockey around here, so we get an opportunity to get the kids out and get them active more than happy to do the work. A lot of the communities don't suffer from lack of players, they suffer from lack of coaching. As a coach, this is what I'm trying to do, is, is go up there and give them the knowledge of how to run a practice. It's gonna benefit the kids and themselves the most. Coaches don't happen overnight. It's a process of sometimes years and years and years. We'll see the fruits of our labor eventually, but it's still a work in progress. But in saying that, it's something I tremendously enjoy doing. It ended up being a pretty nice venue out there for us. And now we actually have an outdoor rink for the kids to skate during the warmer days. So here's Julia putting in the screws. Go ahead, Julia. We're almost done building our ice rink, aren't we, Julia? Yeah. That's we got one more section to go on the length. And then we have to put the white plastic pieces on. Quite a bit bigger from last year, so. Now it will be, how many feet wide? It's 24 feet wide. 24 feet wide and? 55 feet long. 55 feet long. So, that's pretty big. This is going to be the the Ronald Adams Memorial Rink, in tribute to my father, who has passed away five years now. Uh, so I think he'd be very proud um, after years of building rinks for me when I was a child. Get in the penalty box! Yeah, Ben, get in the penalty box. Get in the penalty box, let's go.
winter, we didn't go out to other places, but we had the dugout to go play on, and hockey was what you played out there. It's basically, uh, just like it sounds, a, a hole in the ground. The reason for it is to, to provide a water source for garden and whatnot around the farm. And uh, so it's, it was about 100 yards away from our house. And when we got home from school at, at uh, 4 o'clock usually, we were over there, you know, polishing up our, our talents. Well, I was born on a farm, and that was the only place I was, I was going to be. She was uh, two days older than me, so she robbed a cradle, actually. Uh, she thought I was the one for her. <laughs> How many kids, grandkids, and great-grandchildren do you have? A whole bunch. <laughs> well, you've lost count. <laughs> yeah. And so how many children do you have? 18. Can you name them all? Oh, I'd be able to name them all. It'll take me a little while. <laughs> well, go on. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> OK. Uh, Jeanette, Doreen, Jerry, Kenny, Marion, Lester, Kevin, Bob, Harold, Roger, uh, Jamie, Joe, twin girls, Kathy and Karen. Um, uh, where are we now? About 13. Lori, Mike and Patty, and Gary, I think. The Wilkie Outlaws are synonymous with the town of Wilkie, and uh, my dad, Bill, played in the 50s and 60s, and then uh, there was one time, uh, there were six of us boys that made up the 18-man the roster with the Outlaws, and it's just kind of one of those small town, very, very proud teams, and uh, the young kids, you know, instead of dreaming to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs or the Edmonton Oilers, their dream is to, to pull on a Wilkie Outlaw jersey. Today, and, and uh, usually on Boxing Day, we do this where everybody gets together, we rent the rink in town, and then follow it up with a, uh, with a potluck supper in the hall in Wilkie, and it's just a lot of fun. The whole cultural experience of a family, being able to be a part of something bigger than their own family, uh, like this outlaw dressing room, the community of Wilkie, all of that stuff just so fits into hockey, family, culture across Canada. It's since we lost mom, dad talks about how lucky we were to have a mom like that. She was so determined. She would have health issues and she was just so determined that she could get over them and overcome them. And I think that's what she must have done her whole life with us. We didn't see it as anger or frustration, but she was just determined to be the best mother she could be and to raise us the best she could. And I think even that came through in our competitiveness was always to go out and do the best we could just by her example. Okay, so uh, uh, this, the say children. Jeanette, Tree, and Jerry, Kenny, Mary, and Lester. Kevin, Kevin Bobby, Bobby, Harold, Harold Roger, Roger, Jamie, Joey, Joey, Kathy, Karen. Patty, Michael, Lori, and Gary, the caboose. I believe we're in the 60s with grandchildren and plus 70 on the great grandchildren. We are a family of loyalty. We are loyal to each other as family, and we're very loyal to our community, to our province. And that is a huge part of who we are. For always remember that it's your family that matters no matter what happens. If you're having a hard time in your life, it's always family that you run back to. I had him for a couple of years, and then his mom straightened out, and she tried to take him back again. It only lasted another, I'd say, another year and a half. And then he's been with me since. We just registered him in hockey and just kept him playing. I think it's got a major 
impact on him because if he wasn't playing hockey, God knows what would be going on, especially today with the drugs that's out there today. It's here, it's close, it's very close. It's even, you know, within our own family, so. It's tough. You okay? <laughs> To see him face that adversity, just like Anne did, you know, I mean, she's mentoring him just the same, um, and, and rise above that. Those are positive role models in the community that we really need to embrace and hold up as champions, because if we don't, you know, it's, it's an opportunity that we're going to miss out on to, to give our kids that hope that they all need. Kids like my boy are watching him, want to be where he is. And that's what you want. You want these kids thriving to be something better and, and to have a positive First Nation role model that's in the spotlight. I mean, not many communities get that. So to, to see that here locally in Williams Lake in a community that Carrie Price came out of, they start seeing and realizing that it could happen. What's the best part of being done road hockey? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Six to forty one. Five. Four. Three to purple. Two. One. Q Royce. Oh, They do an incredible job week in, week out of uh, really highlighting what makes each of these communities so special. So hometown hockey coming to Dauphin was pretty awesome. When an event like that comes, it's not only the hockey people that attend because it becomes more of a community event. And I think that was great to see how almost everyone has a link to hockey. I played hockey growing up. My dad coached hockey. My sister played hockey. I married a hockey player. We have two boys who are hockey players, and we billet in Dauphin now. The billet program here in Dauphin, Lindsay and I are actually the billet coordinators, so we have to recruit families that would like to take in a player or two, and then we got to place the, the player with certain families. My family's been billeting since 2014, and we've had roughly uh, 9 to 11 kids in and out of our house. We have the best billets that you could ask for. They're fabulous. My kids love them to pieces. They're like their older siblings. For a lot of people, it's a misconception that, you know, they're, they're hockey players and they're just gonna bring trouble. But when you find someone that comes into your home, loves your kids, wants to help out, and becomes a part of your family, I think that's pretty special. Par game, juste pour mettre un peu sur le contexte, par game, on average près de 1000 personnes. On a une population de 6000. Fait qu'il y a une personne sur six qui va voir du hockey de la Grand Soule. Quand -ce qu on, on a su que les Rapides venaient ici euh, comme une équipe de Junior A, euh, on, a euh, on avait l'intention de mettre notre, notre nom comme une famille d'accueil pour euh, un ou deux joueurs. Les deux gars qui restaient ici, Christian Schneider et Jordan Michaud, ils ont joué dehors avec Emily, ils ont fait un fort en arrière. C'est comme des, des grands frères pour, pour Emily. Starting off, like my first day, you know, we were just talking about, like, of course, house rules and stuff. Um, but they were telling me just a little bit about Emily and uh, what she, you know, went through, like, earlier in the year, in her past years. But from what it sounded like, they didn't, they didn't really want to talk about it a lot. Emilie avait une tumeur au cerveau. Option, c'est la grosse chirurgie. L'organisation des rapides ont fait un, un genre de banquet, un banquet de fait saison pour les, les, les joueurs, puis les billets, puis les, les parents. Mais nous autres, on était à Saint-Justine pour la chirurgie à Emilie. Mais les boys, ils ont été voir l'organisation, puis euh, ils ont comme demandé pour avoir un jersey puis un hockey. 
Puis les joueurs des rapides, ils ont tous signé. Puis le soir du banquet, ils ont fait un, un, un auction. Le support que ça nous a donné, c'était merveilleux. Ils n'ont pas 18 ans, ils n'ont pas 19 ans. Comme... C'était comme... It was meant to be, no? que ces gars-là ont venu chez nous. Donc, on a reçu deux nouveaux joueurs à ce moment-là. On a reçu Evan Jackson et Bobby Labelle. Puis c'est ces joueurs-là qui sont ici aujourd'hui. C'est deux, deux fins garçons. Euh, c'est les grands frères Emily. Grâce aux Hawks. What you doing? Homework. We're just doing the homework now. Yeah. So today we were supposed to have a great hockey day, but unfortunately, my little girl did not finish her homework. So no hockey today. Right, Megan? Guys, listen. We've had a roller coaster, right? We've had some bad luck, we've had some tragedy. It's time as a group that we make this change, okay? We're gonna make our own luck. We're gonna make good luck today. It starts today with our group, understand me? I want passion, I want energy. We get out here today. I want to see us play our best game of the year here, boys. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Big W. We've had a very difficult start to our year. Recently, we had a player break his neck. Our goalie has a broken ankle right now, and tragically, one of our players lost his father last week. It's made us as a coaching staff even more of a guidance counselor than a hockey coach and somebody that they can talk to and lean on. Everything gets magnified in that minor midget year because there's a lot of eyeballs on them. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in everything that they do, so there's a lot more pressure. So as a coach, you got to be a sounding board for them. You're talking about 15-year-old kids, and. Um, you know, they'll open up to their hockey coaches sometimes a little bit more than their parents or teachers. And, um, you know, it's, it's our job to, to make sure that we're looking after them both on and off the ice. Best we've played in a while because of all the stuff we've been through. So I thought the boys battled pretty hard tonight and played really good. My hockey team was on the way to go play Delisle in the PJHL finals, and we get a, a phone call saying, hey, there's been a crazy bus crash. We had no idea if it was bad or what was going on, and then we started getting reports. And I said, tears in my eyes, thinking, you know, when, when I found out that it wasn't your bus that was in the accident, you know, I, I was very happy. But at the same time, I remember feeling devastated right after that, thinking of what happened. And then as the, this was at about 5.30 in the afternoon, and news had just started trickling in about the accident, right? Then it hit with the text that we think it's the humble Broncos, and It was way worse than we thought. And to know that I had a lot of buddies on that team. I was on the bus at the exact same time, about two hours away from the crash. The thing that helped myself overcome the tragedy was the entire hockey community. Nobody can do it by themselves. It doesn't matter what league, what division, anything like that. Doesn't matter the politics, none of that matters. Because in the big perspective of things, we're all together in this. We 
got the Jolly Penny on top there. Now it's time to go to bed. Well, sorry. Feed the pig, feed myself, and go to bed. A late night trading sesh. Can you guys come in now? Guys, went to bed. Five minutes. And that's how you do it. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Good morning. See ya. All right, baby, come on. Let's go to bed. Show him the one of Ronan. Where's your cousin? There? No, that's Wayne Grexky. I wish there? he was her cousin. And I wish he was her cousin, too. <laughs> poor, poor Ronan. You gonna sleep in your hockey stuff tonight? Yeah. Yeah? Do you think it'll be comfortable, though? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to read, read your good night hockey book? Yeah. A little nighttime hockey reading before bed. Good night, Canada. Good night, hockey. Bye bye. Good night, Matthew. It's good night, Carlton. We're just going to make sure that they're sleeping and end off our video. And that's a wrap. Kids are in bed, and uh, now it's my turn to have a little bit of fun. So, I got men's league hockey, 9 p.m. game. Time to get the gear. We are now at our second rink of the day. It's just before nine o'clock. My men's team is about to go. Guys, are we ready to rock? Yeah! All right, let's go. In the LGBTQ community, often people feel lost that they don't have a, a space or environment to build friendships in. And I think we've, we've done a really good job of fostering that respectful environment. I went to teach in China seven years ago and the name that my students gave me translated to Mountains on Shoulders. And it sort of hit me that um, uh, I wasn't living my true life because I wasn't being who I actually was. That, that weight drags people down. Being able to be yourself, um, and, and it takes time. It's not an overnight switch where you're all of a sudden super comfortable with yourself. It takes a lot of time, but having the support group around you and being able to sort of live your true life um, uh, really does make a difference in the long term. Hockey has had a huge impact in my life, very positive, and I, basically for me it was all about family, and it was about friendships, and a lot of times my friends basically became my family. That's how uh, close our bonds were through playing hockey. I want other people to experience the joy and the passion and the love and, and the friendship and the camaraderie that you can experience through hockey. Some about hockey, it, it can't be matched. I don't know what it is, but there's something special about it.